This conference you, will now be recorded. It is not quite six o'clock. We have about two more minutes. So if you guys would just hang on a little bit and we're going to give others time to join. Glad you could join us this evening. Hang on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Vigils, rallies, and gatherings to honor Taylor. This evening in Piedmont Triad, three groups are holding separate events with the same call for justice message. Good evening. This is Fox 8, 6 o'clock news. I'm Neil Neal. And I'm Katie Norton. Fox 8, Daniel here. Where's the pizza? Let me ask anyone who is not speaking, if you would please put your phones on mute so we don't hear your background noise. Thank you. Okay, it looks like it is right at six o'clock, so let's go ahead and get started. Good evening, everyone. It been, seems like it's been a long time since we've been together. I sure do miss y'all. <laughs> I really, really do. Well, we've got a treat for you tonight. We're going to switch it up just a little bit. Um, I think most of you have probably heard that we have a participant advisory committee and there's certain participants who serve on that committee and they give advice to our board and to our staff about things that we can do at PACE. And our board chair, Mr. Steve Fleming, is here, is, has joined us tonight so that he can get some feedback from you all since we haven't been able to have participant advisory committee. So later in the agenda, towards the end, um, Mr. Fleming is going to come on and have a word with you and take any feedback that you might have from, from him. And so what I'm going to do is just kind of make a few announcements for you, and then I'm going to turn it over to uh, Dr. Carey, and she's going to also give you some updates from the clinic and some medical updates. Anyway, let me just remind everyone first that if you are not talking, please put your phone on mute so that the person who's talking and the others who are trying to listen won't have that feedback, if you will. Thank you, thank you. All right, so let me get started um, with some introductions. Just so you'll know who's joined us uh, from the PACE staff, we have Adria Smith, who's always with us. Adria is our quality compliance, IT, uh, medical records. She's, she does a little bit of everything at PACE. She's on the call with us, and she's the one that makes sure that we can get these calls in. And I hear somebody's, um, I believe it's someone's TV in the background. If you would please put your phone on mute so I don't hear your TV in the background. And Adria, I don't, I don't know if you can mute or not. This is the town uh, hall meeting for Pace of the Triad. And if you would please put your phones on mute, uh, we would greatly, greatly appreciate it. There we go. All right. Thank you. Uh, also on the line, we have Ms. Nidra Baldwin, who's also been with us every time. And Nidra, as you know, has been with us for a very long time, almost as long as I have. Um, and then we have Dr. Carey, who is one of our providers in the clinic, and she'll be speaking with you shortly. Uh, I believe Miss Lucilia may be on the line as well. Lucilia is our center manager, and she's been with us for quite some time. And then, as I mentioned earlier, our board chair, Mr. Steve Fleming, 
uh, is with us tonight. So let me just jump in with some updates. And towards the end, uh, when uh, Steve takes over again, you'll be able to give him some input. Um, let me start by giving you the Pace Center 88C, or as we call it, the Day Center update. Um, when we cannot change a situation, we are challenged to change ourselves. Is that not right? When we can't change a situation, we are challenged to change ourselves. If you would put your phone on mute, please. Even when you're moving around, if you're not on mute, I can even hear your movement. So that would help the speakers out a whole lot if you would have your phone on mute. I saw this quote, when we cannot change a situation, we are challenged to change ourselves on a billboard this weekend with a picture of a praying healthcare worker. And it sat with me. I'm beyond grateful for our participants, for the caregivers, and certainly for our PACE team who remain steadfast, resilient, and hopeful that this too shall pass. We truly are in this together, and we look forward to the day when we can all celebrate together with some high fives, some uh, shaking of hands, some hugs, hugs and see one of another's beautiful smile. We are certainly looking forward to that. Thank you all for being strong during this pandemic. It really means the world to us. Now, the ADHC Center continues to practice the three Ws, and we remain vigilant in our efforts. So what does that really mean? You guys have heard me say it before. It simply means that we're not gonna let our guards down. We're wearing the mask. We're washing our hands frequently. We're sanitizing our hands frequently along with the washing, and we are maintaining six feet distancing throughout the building. We continue to work as a team to promote the health, safety, and well-being of our participants and our team members. Now, you may or may not know, oftentimes some of our participants, particularly those who have dementia or cognitive deficits, are not, let me get you to put your phone on mute. Thank you. Um, they are not able to hold conversations. Um, excuse me, they may not be able to wear their mask properly. Uh, as healthcare professionals, we understand this and we gently remind them and redirect them and assist them with putting their mask on properly throughout the day. Since we reopened on July 6th, I've had the pleasure of witnessing our staff assisting participants with grace, patience, and composure. Please know that we will encourage all participants to wear a mask, and we are focused on six feet of physical distancing to help offset any concerns with participants who have trouble wearing masks. As of today, all participants are seated one to a table, and all PACE team members are wearing masks. Please put the phone on mute. I hear some background noise. Thank you. We would like to emphasize that the safety, health, and well-being of our participants, caregivers, and their families, as well as our team members and their families, are our primary goal during this unprecedented time. And we will continue to communicate changes to you in a timely manner. So that right now is the update. There's one little thing in regards to the center that would be helpful for you to know that we have put up they call it a plexiglass shield uh, right in the middle of every table so that if there's ever two people to a table, there is a shield. I can't quite remember how tall it is, but there's a shield in between two participants if you ever have two sitting at a table. And what that does, of course, and Dr. Kerry can speak to it as well, is if someone were to call for a whole conversation, uh, who for whatever reason could not wear a mask, we now have this double protection between them and the other participant who's sitting at that table. So all of our tables have that now. I'm gonna switch gears on you and talk a little bit about voting. 
Last time we talked, some of you had questions about voting, so I wanted to share some information. Of course, we all know that November 3rd is the election, and it is expected to be like no other election due to the pandemic. We want you to make we want to make sure that you have everything you need to exercise your right to vote. And more importantly, we want to make sure that you can do it safely. So there are about 25 more polling locations in Guilford County this year and an increase of about 80 percent in voting hours made available this year. There have been no reduction in the number of polling places or available voting <laughs> hours in Rockingham County. There are some organizations and churches who are providing rides to the polls. Please contact your pay social worker if you need help getting to the polls. They are aware of the transportation that's available uh, through organizations and churches to help people get to the polls. I'm understanding from Dr. Culler that he has even volunteered with one of these organizations to help transport people to the polls. So again, if you have, think you're gonna have trouble getting to the polls because you've decided to go, please contact your social worker and she will assist you. If you have not registered to vote, the deadline to register is October the 9th. You have three options for voting, and this is really important, so I'm gonna take my time on this. You have three options for voting. The first one is absentee voting by mail. All registered voters can cast a ballot by mail. No special circumstances are necessary. To request a ballot, you may fill out a form online or you may request one by phone through your board of elections or you can call Pace of the Triad. We actually have some forms there for you. You do not need someone to witness your signature on the form. The completed form may be mailed, emailed, faxed, or hand delivered to the Board of Elections office. This request, however, must be received by October 27th. The other option you have for voting is early voting. Of course, the first one, the absentee voting, allows you to stay in your home and do it. Then you have the option of early voting. A registered voter may vote in person during the one-stop early voting period at any voting location in our county, anyone. It doesn't have to be your precinct. It could be anyone when you're early voting. The dates for early voting are October 15th through the 31st. October 15th through the 31st. If you are planning to go to a poll site to vote, this is what we recommend simply because we're thinking that the lines won't be as long during this early voting. They're gonna be long, I think, no matter what, because this is gonna be a, an election year like no other, but we think you may be better off in terms of not having so many people uh, in line by doing early voting. And then finally, you've got the on election day voting. Um, a person may vote in person on the election day, but you have to go to your precinct, your polling place, and the polls are going to be open from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. Lines are expected to be long, and for your safety, please wear your mask. Please try to physically distance. I know that polling places are really working on this, and wash your hand before and after you cast your vote. In the past, polls have had some drive-up options, and I don't know for sure whether or not they will have them this year, but certainly if they have the drive-up option on election day, we encourage you to take advantage of that. If you have any questions about anything that I just went over regarding voting, call your pay social worker. They've got lots more details, lots more resources that they can tell you about when it comes to voting. Our goal is to make sure you exercise your right to vote. All right, let me go to another subject matter and that is PACE Month. The month of September, for those of you who were with us last year, you may recall that September is PACE Month. This is where we are recognizing PACE nationally. 
It is our opportunity to spread awareness about PACE for people who don't know about us. So we need all of you all's help in helping us spread the word about PACE. So it, how you can do that, I'm so glad you asked. If you use social media, things like Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube, visit our page and like and follow us. That is one way that you can help us get the word out about PACE. This helps people learn about our services, and if you know of anyone who could benefit from PACE, of course you know I'm going to tell you to please let them know um, about our program and have them to give us a call. And then we have a caregiver support virtual skills training workshop that's coming up. This is going to be on October the 15th at 3 o'clock. We are doing this workshop, this caregiver skills workshop with Wellspring Solutions. We will focus on self-care strategies for caregivers and care techniques for assisting a loved one who is resistant. We will have more details in the October newsletter, so please make sure you read that. Or you can certainly call PACE. You are also encouraged to visit PACE YouTube channel for any past workshops that we've ever done or any videos that we've ever made. Those are all out there on our YouTube channel. And then I believe finally, I want to tell you, remind you about the surveys that I believe we've talked about the last time. There are two of them. One is called the Haas M survey. That's the one that Medicare is sending out and it's gonna have its self-addressed stamped envelope with it. Please, 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 I cannot stress enough. We need you to fill those surveys out, stick them back in the mail. This is Medicare's way every year to find out what types of things you need assistance with. Now, let me say this. This is not the time for you to think about what you can do on your best days. This is the time for you to think about, on average, how do you go about completing the things that you have to do to get through the day? So if you have a good day and you're able to do a lot, thank God for that. However, what Medicare is interested in is what are you able to do on average every day, not just on a good day. So it's real important that you take your time, fill out this survey, if you have any questions about, because some of the questions are a little, I don't want to say weird, but like, um, how can I say this? Well, they, they just ask you questions that you might not know, uh, like how, how many distance you might can walk, something like that. So if you don't know that distance, let me encourage you to call PACE because our therapy team has been looking at this survey and they've been actually developing little mock uh, surveys in the building to help people figure that out. Plus, they know you all and they can help you determine how many distance, for example, if that's one of your questions. So just don't hesitate to call us if you need help with that survey in any way. And then the last survey that you've gotten that also has, a, I believe, a self-addressed stamped envelope is the Pulse survey. And please put your phone on mute. I hear some um, talking at somebody's house. If you would just put your phone on mute so everybody can hear. There you go. Thank you very much. I believe it's a TV that I hear in the background now. Someone has their TV on. If you could put your phone on mute so we don't hear the TV. So the last survey is that Pulse survey that I was speaking about. That comes from the National Pace Associate. Excuse me. That comes from the State Pace Association. Uh, it is a um, data that we're trying to figure out how the Pace programs. Uh, throughout the country have done with taking care of the participants while we're doing this in this pandemic. So they need your feedback um, on how PACE programs have been doing. 
So if you would please also, I know it's a lot, y'all, and I, I, I apologize. Seems like everything happens all at once. But if you and your family member would please take the time and fill out that survey as well and stick it back in the mail, it will help us a whole lot determine what we need to continue to do and what we uh, need to stop doing and what we did well, et cetera. So thank you so much for indulging me on all of those announcements. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. And I believe we have next on the agenda is Dr. Carey, uh -huh. who's going to give us, yes. yes. I, I, I was about to get those. Catch the first of it. Okay, we're going to tell you how you can go back and listen to it a little bit later, okay? okay. All right. So I still hear some background noise. Someone does not have their phone on mute. And I really want you all to be able to hear what Dr. Carey has to say and Steve. So please put your phone on mute. Even if, you, even if you're by yourself and you're not, um, you don't have a TV on or a radio on. Believe it or not, I can even hear you breathing. Yeah, I can hear you breathing into the phone. So please put your phone on mute. Everybody, put your phones on mute. There should be a little button on your phone that says mute, or I believe it's, um, is it star 60, star 69 or star 68? That's also a way to mute your phone. Carrie, Carrie is, um, Dr. Carrie has been with our PACE program for about two years now, a little over two years. Her anniversary is in June of this year, and we have been so fortunate to have uh, Carrie as one of our providers. So, Carrie, you can take it away. Thank you, Ursula. Good evening, everyone. And um, I am an advanced practice nurse with my doctorate in nursing practice. I'm nationally certified as an adult and gerontological primary care nurse practitioner, as well as a dementia practitioner. I am a primary care provider at Pace of the Triad, and I do have um, a uh, panel of clients. Um, I am wanting to share with you some updates um, of our clinic and how things are going. We are seeing uh, our participants for acute issues. Uh, the majority of our reassessment comprehensive exams are being done by telehealth, by audio or video, um, using uh, the iPad. And um, we have our CNAs going out into the homes and, and helping us with that. And it's, it's working very well. Um, right now, we are not having visitors to the clinic. Um, we are trying to maintain, excuse me, safety, certainly. Um, in the next little bit, we will be um, coming to homes and providing flu vaccines to make sure that we have a low influenza occurrence with PACE. Um, with um, COVID, let's talk a little bit about COVID. So our last COVID-19 case um, was at the end of July. And overall, these cases have been community and skilled nursing facility related. In Guilford and Rockingham County, cases have been more stable as of late. Um, unfortunately, in my county that I live in, in Forsyth, we are still, um, still having a lot of cases and unfortunately deaths. Um, especially this week, that make sure that we, as first of all, we're saying, that we don't let our guard down. It's uh, really important that we continue with our current North Carolina mandates by the governor. Um, no more than 25 folks in an outdoor event or 50 for outdoor, I'm sorry, 25 for indoor, 50 for outdoor, and that we are practicing the three W's and, and washing our hands is, is very vital. Um, certainly as a nurse, I will tell you that uh, wetting your hands and then adding soap 
and then washing our hands for 20 seconds and using that friction to scrub off the germs off our hands is really important as well as when we wash our hands make sure that we're washing our hands as we prepare food after we eat after we touch our pet of course after we use our bathroom anytime you touch a public space a doorknob light switch in a public place let's wash our hands uh, when you touch your garbage as you're taking it out when you come back in wash your hands and anytime you touch your mask or your face you need to think about washing your hands um, surfaces we're still bleaching some different um, mandated products in the clinic and it is certainly worthwhile to do that in your home as you're able i know that you've seen folks wear masks not over their nose and only on their mouth but it is very important to cover your nose and your mouth we are certainly still very concerned about um, air droplets and um, that is you know one of our main known causes for COVID-19 so we need to make sure that we are covering nose and mouth and that we are um, standing at least six feet apart now certainly um, CDC is you know going back and forth a little bit but we want to make sure that we're managing our air conditioners per the manufacturing recommendations that we're replacing our air filters and making sure that vents are without obstruction we want to make sure that you are getting enough rest and that you're staying hydrated as well as covering any cough or sneezes and we really want to make sure now and as we go into the flu season that we're not sharing personal items among family members um, if, if at all possible everyone should should make sure that, of that of combs towels we need to make sure that we're not sharing personal items and cleaning surfaces as, as we can um, I did have a few numbers here. Um, Guilford County, 8,209 cases as of this week, 176 deaths. Rockingham County, 1,168 cases. And I didn't have an exact number. I have less than 20 deaths listed on that. Um, so we just really need to make sure that we're, we're keeping up and that we're not letting our guard down. Especially as we go into the influenza season, we're really hoping um, to mitigate that as well. But I thank you for your time, and um, I wish you safety, and I hope you take good care. Thank you, Carrie. Appreciate that. All right. Well, folks, here is our board chair, Mr. Steve Fleming. Steve, please take it. Well, thank you, Ursula. And just a real quick check of the telephone, make sure you can hear me okay. Can you hear me, Ursula? I can. All right. Well, good evening, everyone, and uh, thank you for allowing uh, me to greet you today as board chair of Pace of the Triad. As you know, or may or may not know, uh, Trace Pace was formed by Wellspring Retirement Community. Cone Health System, what used to be Hospice and Palliative Care of Guilford County, it's now Car Care, and the old Advanced Home Care, which is no longer in business. Today, our new partner is Lutheran Services of the Carolinas, and I have the privilege of being board chair uh, as CEO of Wellspring. So again, thank you all for joining us tonight. The purpose of the PACE Participant Advisory Committee is to allow PACE participants to offer suggestions and feedback back to the board or management of PACE. Tonight's 
PACE advisory committee, uh, participant advisory committee is not intended to be for personal issues. If you have a personal issue that pertains to you only, you Lucilia or call Lucilia or Ursula, as they can be glad to take care of that. But this is more for program suggestions, things that the whole the program as a whole can work on. So I'll open up the floor. First, I'll turn to Ursula. We'll talk a bit about uh, suggestions that we had from the last meeting, and any follow-up needs to go from that. Ursula? Thanks, Steve. Well, with the last meeting, um, we did not have any suggestions for what we could do differently at that particular meeting, but let me give you an example of some that we've had before. We've had suggestions about uh, meals, um, the lunch meals. We've had suggestions about transportation. So if you can give us ideas of things that we need to start doing or things that you would like for us to stop doing, that would help us as we continue to work on how to improve. So because uh, I don't know how many are on the line yet. Adria, do you have a sense of how many people are on the line? Uh, 33. Okay. So because we've got 33 phone lines going, this might get a little difficult. So I'm going to try to manage it as best I can. But if you'd like to tell us something that we can start or stop doing, you can unmute your phone and Adria is taking notes so that we will have that information. All right? So who would like to start? Well, I like to start. Anybody have any? Go ahead. Okay, I heard. Hi, this yeah. is Sylvia Sasha. Okay, let me say, let me just stop you just for a minute. If you would please not use your name because these sessions are, are, are recorded and then we put them on the website. So if you, for confidentiality purposes, just don't say your name. Okay, I heard a, a lady's voice and I heard a gentleman's voice. So gentlemen, let's let the lady go first and then you come after her. Okay, go uh, right ahead. Yes, uh, I enjoy uh, PACE. Uh, continue to do what you do, and all that you do is great. Uh, I don't have anything that, that would start as a stop, uh, but I do appreciate PACE. Thank you so much for sharing that. We appreciate that. Thank you, thank you. All right, there was a gentleman that was going to say something. Yes, uh, my only question would be, uh, I didn't know how the back door when we can only, when we're just going to the clinic and like myself, for instance, I don't have uh, like anybody with me. And I was just wondering, you know, I sort of sat there and have to knock on the, the door. And I was just wondering, is, is somebody actually looking at me or am I just hoping that somebody hears me? Because with the cold weather coming, with the cold weather coming up, I mean, right? I mean, Absolutely. during the warm weather wasn't too bad, but with the cold weather coming yeah. up, I wouldn't want to be standing out there. <laughs> Absolutely, I totally agree with that. So we do not have a camera at that door. We didn't think we would ever need one right there. But um, what I'd like to suggest, and what I've heard the staff tell participants to do is to call us when you get there and then someone from the clinic will go to the door and stand until you drive around. Okay. So if you could call us either before you leave your house or you can call us when you get there and then we'll make sure that somebody from the clinic is at the door. Well, actually, that's what Thank I've you. been doing. <laughs> okay. Good. So have you had to wait long when you've been at no, I, I have. But I was just, okay, I was just thinking about the cold weather. Thinking about the cold weather. 
Thank you. Thank you for thinking about that. That's a, that's a great um, idea that we need to think about to see if there's anything different that we might do with that door back there in the back. Thank you again. Thank you. Anybody else? I have a question. I have something to say, not a question. Yes. Uh, and I would like to say thanks ever so much for the concern and the interest shown us. And we would like to say we appreciate whatever Peace has been doing and is still doing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you know, we love you all. So and we worry about you so i know sometimes it feels like we just call too much but we just want to make sure we keep up with you all and know what's going on with you so thank you for being patient with us and thank you for that um that feedback anybody else Well, Ursula, it's, it, I, we don't have a whole lot of folks making uh, needing to make a comment, but I'd like to add one thing. Um, okay. Well, two two things actually. So, first of all, I can't say enough about the pay staff uh, during this COVID pandemic. Uh, they have been resilient. They've been dedicated. Um, they have lived through their own uncertainty. Um, both of perhaps jobs and family and obviously have helped, but yet have put our participants first and have transitioned for a while to a home and community-based program instead of a, an adult day program. And it's just been wonderful watching the, the work that they've done. And I, I want to thank Ursula and her entire team for all that they've done and i want to thank the participants for your confidence in pace of the triad you and your families have put a lot of faith in us and we have hopefully delivered and we will continue to deliver uh, these of course are trying times but we have one of the best teams in the nation and we have the best leader in the nation and I am extremely confident about Pace's future, and I really appreciate all that the staff has done during this crisis. Thank you, Steve. Thank you very much. And we do appreciate it. Yes, indeed. And I tell you guys, um, yes, go right ahead. I would like to share the sentiments of Steve, and I want to say that I love the way PACE responds to the participants and their family mm -hmm. members. Who knows their situation better than them? And when they come to us with service requests or ideas, we respond. And that is such a wonderful thing, and that's what makes it work. And I'm so proud of the organization and the support that they provide to this community. That's all I have to say. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have been on Excuse me. over an hour. Yes, go right ahead. Kudos to, kudos to all of y'all, including from you, uh, Mr. Steve, and all the staff and the participants. <laughs> It's we so all love good to you. Hear your voice. And we're praying for good you. To hear your and you voice. keep on doing what you're doing. And we're doing the same for you. Love you all and pray Wait. for you all. Love you, Mayor. Thank you. <laughs> all right, y'all. We've here. gone on we've gone on past that hour, but thank you all for calling in and uh we'll let you know when we're gonna have the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.